Okay, I got seven o'clock Verizon time. Uh, <clears throat> we have no public hearings tonight, so I'd like to call the meeting uh, tonight, Wednesday, November 9th, to order. And Ron Brand, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ron. We have uh, two sets of minutes to approve tonight. Our regular town board meeting of October 25th and the joint water meeting we had on Tuesday, November 1st. Was motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ron. Changes, questions, comments? I just have to abstain on the minutes from the 25th. I was not present. That's right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Privilege of the floor, public concerns. A privilege of the floor, public concerns. Larry. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like the three page letter from the planning board back to the town board. Um, because we got it late Friday or Mon Monday of this week, Monday, Monday of this week, uh, I didn't put it on tonight's schedule, but Tom Ward will talk about it on the 22nd. You can, you can get a copy, uh, from Michelle. We'll make sure you get that. Yep. Any other public concerns, comments? This is Mike Phillips from, uh, online. If you can hear me. Okay. Yes, we can. Um, I didn't quite hear what Larry was saying. Uh, was he talking about the power incentive zoning? Communications yes. number 19? Yes. Uh, uh, Larry Potter is a resident on yes. County Road 8 that backs up to the Powers Project, and he was just asking about that uh, correspondence letter. And is that going to be discussed tonight? We're not discussing the Powers at all tonight. Okay. Well, I did I see it online. It was communications number 19. Correct. Yeah, okay. so I told I told Larry he can come to the town clerk and get a copy of that, and it'll be discussed at our November 22nd meeting. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. Reports of standing committees, public works. <clears throat> yeah, we met over at the wastewater treatment plant yesterday morning. At at uh, 7.15. Um, a lot of the stuff, just ongoing stuff that we've been discussing at past meetings. Um, some stuff we have made progress on. Dave did report he's been working on some new fall arrest equipment and some safety gear. He has been successful in finding some new vendors um, to get some of that equipment. Um, he did have a successful test of the switch gear for our generator system over there at the plant. That was completed on November 4th. Basically, they cut the power to the plant to make sure our backup system would come online um, automatically. And um, they're working through some systems that are throwing faults after it happens. But all in all, sounds like the test went, went fairly well. Uh, water main over at 332 and 96. If you've been by there, most of the holes are filled in. We're really just waiting on the contractor to finish the pressure testing and the disinfection after that. They've been over on Townline Road. Pretty much that project is done. Uh, it was done by staff in-house. Uh, testing, pressure testing is done, disinfection is done. Um, we're just waiting on a contractor to drill. There's four services that have to go underneath the road. Uh, once they're done, they'll be over there doing the, the final grading and. Uh, work over there. Did have some discussion on our sewer flow meters that we have out in the system, just monitoring uh, flows in different areas. Um, Dave has spent a lot of time getting these tuned in and trained our guys on them. We've been getting some very good readings from those, so had a good discussion on that. Pump station 25, we've talked about that for a while. Uh, our contractor over there did get most of the work done. Um, pumps were supposed to be installed yesterday with electrical to follow today, but 
I'll let you update us, Dave, if there's more, more that's been done on that. Um, had some discussion on just grading and drainage at the wastewater treatment plant, something that's going to be engineered this year for some new paving next year. Uh, we also did have a fairly major water main break uh, on 332. We had a, a contractor hit a 20 inch main over there. Um, our guys did a great job, got it fixed fairly quickly. Um, and that contractor is going to be getting a fairly hefty bill for all the time and effort that our guys had to put in to, to clean up the mess over there. Um, that's really it from water and sewer. On the highway and park side. Just a lot of ongoing equipment maintenance. Um, they did a lot of ditch cleaning now that farmers have gotten crops off the field. They've been cleaning ditches over in Farmbrook, um, doing some drainage pipe repair over Rossler and Maxwell Road, and unfortunately getting plow equipment ready because it's, it's coming. So I see we had an invoice today for all the rust protection on all the trucks, which is another step in just getting stuff ready for the, the winter weather. Parkside, again, just a lot of ongoing stuff, building maintenance, they're still mowing. Parks and trails, uh, a lot of crosswalk painting. Again, parks guys have to get their plows ready, salters ready and get all our parks bathrooms winterized uh, for the cold. A um, couple resolutions for him tonight and anything else I'll let him follow up on and we can talk about the resolutions as they come up. Thanks, Steve. Town operations. Town operations met this morning. We have two resolutions tonight. Um, the amended sidewalk easement and maps have been received from MRB and the town will be sending these out to property owners. These involve the sidewalks from the TAP a sidewalk trail project. Uh, Director of Planning and Development has begun working with the Ontario County Planning, who will be preparing a scope for the tributaries within the uh, Seneca watershed. Um, there are nine municipalities involved with this, and we'll be seeking funds from FEMA to see if we can get this off the off the trial. We've had talked about this ten years ago, and then the county wanted the municipalities to get involved, and then it went away for some reason. Uh, so that's coming up, which is good, and something we should get involved with. Um, the Ontario County Tourism continues its drafting a, a report to the Board of Supervisors on short-term rentals, which hopefully will be available next month. And once this is released, it's expected to give us insight into draft legislation legislation on short-term rentals that uh, on, on a local level here. Um, there were two fire calls. Uh, Dan will go over anything from the building palm, and I don't know if Ron, you want to add anything to what I said. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Thanks, Mike. Uh, report from town officials. Uh, supervisor, uh, tonight we do have the resolution to approve the final 2023 budget. Uh, expenses were slightly increased. Uh, one personal line in the, in the supervisor section. Revenue increased one line in the town clerk's budget, basically the dog license revenue. We did add some fund balance to lower the town general and highway tax rate. The tax rate will decrease 2.39% or a dollar to a thousand down to a dollar per thousand of assessed value. Water, the city of Canandaigua has increased the cost of purchasing water for 2023 an estimated 14%. So I increased the expense line source of supply in the water budget by 12.6%. That's uh, all I have on, there's all the changes that were made between the tentative preliminary and, and the final budget. Uh, Ontario County, a few comments. Uh, overall, the elections across the county went very well. And the sheriff now, uh, starting January 1st, uh, David Sensorone, uh, Congressman, Congresswoman Tenney was elected to replace Congressman Jacobs with a new defined congressional district. Uh, Tim, congratulations on your run for the highway superintendent. So we, we make it official now for the election. And uh, Judge Morris Lewis continues to serve as our 
one of our two town judges here in town of Farmington. Uh, also at the county Monday, I chaired the county public works committee. Uh, Chairman Lightfoot was not available. Uh, Ways and Means met this afternoon. It wasn't done until a little after five o'clock. And the 2023 Ontario County budget will be introduced at next week's, the tentative budget will be introduced at next week's Board of Supervisors meeting. Tomorrow morning, I'm on a committee to interview applicants for the director of purchasing position at the county. The current director is retiring very soon. That's all I have. I win parks. Uh, not much to add to what Steve reported. Um, I just wanted to add that we picked up the public works a little while ago um, that I we changed the nightman hours from so he'll be coming in Sunday night instead of Monday night. So we got somebody there on Monday morning that they're ready. The guys seem to I'll be in favor of that. It was kind of their idea made sense. So we switched the hours. So they'll be they'll be coming in at 10 o'clock on Sunday night and we'll be done at 6 30 in the morning. And then it'll go to Friday. So they'll be done at 6 30 a.m. on, on Friday. Mm -hmm. So that's got the, the Monday morning commute covered a little better, I believe. With that being said, the night man starts Sunday night. Maybe we'll get some snowy weather. Who knows? Well, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Possible. It's, you know, even the even the rain and the cold and freezing. Yeah. Few bridges. But, you know, making sure the trucks are ready to go tomorrow. And all the sanders equipment's on. Got to make sure the doors are up, and cleaned out. And ready to go. Sounds good. That's all I got. Thank you. Young clerk. All right. In front of you, you have the 2023 uh, budget that you will be adopting tonight. I will also be officiating two more wet marriages this week, one tomorrow and uh, actually one next Friday. And we are working on getting quotes to convert some microfilm, payroll microfilm to a PDF CD uh, from like the 1980s. And that should be it. We should have all that completed in one minute um, from 1802 to 1839. So that we're working on getting quotes for that. That's it. Just writing that down. 1802 to 1839. Good. Yep. Water and sewer. Dave. Uh, just a couple of additions. Um, the town line road water main project. We took our second set of samples today. I expect that to be good. Um, we have a contractor scheduled to do those services next Wednesday. So hopefully that will be completed in a short amount of time. We will be going out again tomorrow to check our sewer flow meters. We're expecting some rain on Friday, so we hope to get some good data on Friday. And um, our contractor is doing a great job over at the pump station five on Langdon. He's been able to complete the job and just pumped in this evening. And the 20 inch water main break that you spoke of, I, as near as I can recall, I think the invoice for the contractor is at about $22,000 at this point. And we've been rather busy. We've had five water main breaks in the last week and a half. So I hope this is an indicator of what can happen when the weather actually gets cold. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Uh, yeah, uh, question. How did they make out in the progress on the Collette Road finding on Gillette's property, finding the sewer line? So we are all the way up to Commercial Drive at the West End. And there's one more point at the property line in the east end. So one more pothole we need to do, and that will be all located. And then the proposed buildings are not in the way of the sewer line? Oh, we, we don't have a cap. All right. Fortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're hoping for. We got what we hoped for. All right. Thank you. Sure.
the testing on town line road okay so that was the testing i mentioned that is a replacement line that's actually a new line that's on the north side of town line road near 332 it's replacing a line that's on the south side of town line it's about a thousand feet of 12 inch pipe and it's been pressure tested disinfected and the testing I'm referring to is the two days of consecutive testing to get that back in service. So our question is, is it's not related to the THM letter that it went out. Yeah. What questions do you have? Okay. No, I can help you. I can help you with that. The uh, testing is required by the EPA quarterly, and we will actually be hitting our normal quarter next week. So we do test in November again in February, May, and then August. And we test for trihalomethanes and for haloacetic acids. These are byproducts of chlorine disinfection with organics in the water. And the reason for that notification is we exceeded that 80 parts per billion that the EPA lists as a limit for a rolling average. And the rolling average would be February, or it would be uh, November of last year, February, May, and August. So those four combined results, the average of those came out to, I believe it was 97. 17 parts per billion over that limit. So we're required by the Department of Health to notify all of our water customers of that, that amount that we are over the limit. As far as the health effects, there can be long-term health effects from those levels, but not one quarter. You would have to see those numbers for five years or 10 years to see any health effects from that. Dave, and also the number of points you take a sample from within the district. We have five locations that we sample from. And the reading, I don't know if it was last quarter or last month, right where we purchased from the city of Canandaigua. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Dave. I'm glad you bring that up. We're a purchaser of water here. So we purchase water from the city of Canandaigua. And a couple of our testing points for these trihalomethanes are right at the border where the water from the city of Canandaigua comes to us. And it's interesting to note that the THM levels at those points coming to us are at 72 parts per million. So we don't have a lot of leeway here in the city, uh, here in, in the town, with the water that we're getting from the city. The other problem that we run into is not only are the, is the formation of the THMs it's due to warmer temperatures, you'll see these levels go up in the August and November readings. It's also a function of time. So, Farmington is a distance from the source, Canandaigua Lake, and the city of Canandaigua water plant. So we have the elevation of temperature in August and November readings, and we also get that extra time that it takes to get here, and it spends more time in the pipe reacting and giving us higher levels. So the town of Canandaigua on a separate water district from the Canandaigua Farms and Water District, they also got notified by the Department of Health of higher THMs. The town of Manchester expects that letter very soon from the Department of Health because they're further away than we supply the town of Manchester and the village of Manchester. And the Wayne County Water Authority in one small uh, district that they have has received the letter from the Department of Health of the higher THMs. So as David mentioned, we 
at the very point where we buy the water, the reading is 72, and the maximum Department of Health or EPA reading that you can have is 80. So we have been over that. By the time it gets further into our district, the further distance away from the city of Canandaigua. So in the let the very end of the letter, it says we're we're flushing water. We how many millions of gallons? We flushed three million <laughs> gallons of water this year in an attempt to alleviate some of these problems. This is all water that we're paying for that's being delivered to us yeah. that we're flushing. So we try to we try to move the water to lower the THMs. And the same way with the town of Manchester, I, I think they do like a million gallons every other month or something. It's a lot. They, they do more than us. Um, and then the other thing that was mentioned in the letter is that we're going to, going to meet with the city of Canandaigua. So it just so happens today, the uh, city manager, John Goodwin, sent out an email uh, just try and set up a date to meet with all the people that buy water from them. So Hopewell buys from them. You know, we buy Canandaigua. Part of the Canandaigua line goes into Bristol. Um, Manchester's invited because they're we're passing on the water to them. And um, so they're trying to set up a meeting next week, um, hopefully, where we can not only discuss the THM issues, but how to alleviate the problems. One of them is the intake in from Canandaigua Lake into the, the water treatment plant in the city of Canandaigua is to extend it out to deeper water so you have cooler water because the lake this summer was uh, extraordinarily high temperatures in July, August, September timeframe. So that's one option. The other option is to add equipment in the filtration process, whether it be a liquid chemical or a paper filtration, all that type of stuff the engineers can talk to that would could be added to their treatment plant process. Um, we really can't do anything until like we replace the Brickyard Road water tank that will have an air circulation system into it. But that water from that tank only takes care of about a third of our Canandaigua Farmington water district. So we still need the city of Canandaigua to do something to treat the water. So that's what the meeting is for next week. It could be a couple million dollars or more in expenditures. And you know, just briefly talking with the supervisors from the other town and the director over in Wayne County, uh, you know, we're willing to share those costs. Just well, we got to have a got to have a plan. So that that letter that everybody got will also be every quarter until our our readings come down. That'll be as part of the the mailing with the quarterly bills from now on. We had to do a separate mailing because we the notice we got missed our billing cycle so we'll put it into the, the next cycle and the cycle after that until well, that until the averages come down average comes down yeah it's just we just don't know any other questions well it, it it's there would be a question for the Geneva office, the Department of Health. Yeah. I suggest you call out there. Yeah, they're the ones that issued the, the letter to all the municipalities. To a lab. We, Dave, correct, correct me if I'm not wrong, but we get the results and the Department of Health gets the results. July 18th, which is when I started. All right. So, and you, and you don't send out a notification. 
they come from the Department of Health. Yeah. Right. Okay. That, that's not, that's not function. The notice that was sent out was actually produced by the Department of Health. Is that the exact wording that they wanted us to put in the letter? Yep. Our, our, our deadline was November, to get it in the mail by November 4th. It seems, it seems that this process could be faster and just trying to figure out how many different agencies. Well, again, the, again, the department, the department of health is short personnel and takes them a while to react. The process will be faster. Okay. Thank you. It, it will. I appreciate you guys showing responsibilities. Yep. Anything else? All right. Building and zoning. All right. Uh, for October, we did 73 permits, bringing our total permits for the year to 841. 301 inspections, total inspections for the year 2,839. Um, seven fire inspections. And then we did uh, 20 zoning uh, compliance um, follow-ups. Uh, we also did tonight are introducing uh, to set up a public hearing for a code update for your next meeting. And um, we're starting to work on the draft dates for PRC planning board and VBA meetings for next year. So we can get those posted hopefully by the end of this month uh, after I talk to the those boards and make sure all those dates are for the best. So. Yep. Always planning, planning ahead of time, right? Thanks. Planning board. Adrian, do you have any? Next meeting is canceled. So it's and then the last meeting we saw the powers property. Yep. We just we just got the notice on the powers property here at the town board and I gave him a copy. All right, sounds good. Ron, Director of Planning and Development. Okay, just to piggyback on a little bit about what Dan was talking about with chapter 74, the uniform code provisions. Uh, after 10 years, uh, the state has come along and amended their codes and uh, require all the municipalities in the state to follow suit. And one of the things that uh, we're looking for is the uh, uh, approval from the uh, Office of Fire Prevention and Control to allow uh, us to require sprinklers in our commercial and industrial buildings. Uh, this is something that the Victor Fire Department has had for a few years. Uh, since Victor is an automatic second alarm with us, it's something that we're um, going for and we feel it could help with the suppression of fires uh, until the uh, department arrives. So uh, that public hearing is uh, very important. We've got letters of support from the fire chiefs in Victor, Farmington and, and Manchester. And uh, hopefully the uh, state will agree to allow us to keep that requirement. Now, as with anything with the state, it's never easy. Um, you have to adopt the regulations first, and then you go to the state to seek approval for the um, sprinklers. And uh, if they don't approve it, then you gotta go back and amend your code. So um, that, that's that aspect. The Farmington Market Center uh, study has been completed, reviewed by Fisher Associates, uh, distributed to, out there. It's on the uh, town clerk's file in the town clerk's office. And uh, that'll be a subject of discussion at your meeting coming up on the 22nd. Um, this drainage report that Mike alluded to 
Yes, we have identified the need for this drainage study um, for about 10 years now. And uh, finally, we, we think that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, it's not an uncommon train. It's a um, opportunity to bring nine municipalities, uh, both here in Ontario County and Wayne County, together to study the watersheds that were recently uh, evaluated by FEMA for the floodplain updates that they did. Uh, no, no response yet from the DOT on the no parking signs. I think we could have been, done this a heck of a lot faster in-house. Um, G&A have started their design uh, improvements over there at the plaza. Uh, the improvements are intended to uh, reduce the blind parking that was there for years. People backing out and people coming in different locations and creating issues. Um, the one thing I do want to report that uh, while I was out doing some work uh, this week, I did go over to Monarch Manor and uh, sitting in the trees above the pedestrian bridge crossing of Beaver Creek were two bald eagles. So they're back. That's yeah, very yeah. positive. My son in law has pictures of them up in Webster. Yeah. He was able to take a picture of them all the way from Webster? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? Well, there's a high telephone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it. Thanks, Ron. Uh, tomorrow night, Ron and I are making a present, presentation to the Farmington Chamber, their annual meeting, and got a slide, I don't know, like 20 slides or whatever, and talking about what's going on in Farmington. So we're, look, we're looking forward to that. Uh, Bill, our town engineer, got called out to an emergency tonight. Uh, I also was kind of waiting to see if Councilman Barman would uh, sign on. He's uh, under the weather, so I you know, want to make sure I report him necessarily absent. And our next on the agenda is uh, Paul Arn, our assessor. Just under the speaker, that podium there will catch your voice. Oh, okay. I won't, um, I'll let you guys. Yes. Um, I, I won't go over the entire report here, but it basically kind of says uh, what has been happening since mm -hmm. they came on board in, uh, in April, late in late April. Um, what is happening now is that we are uh, deeply involved in the reassessment process. Um, we have by a, a, uh, an agreement with the county to help us with the computerized model which uh, tells us what they think, what the computer says the new assessed value should be for, for properties. What I do is I travel around, I look at all the houses, I compare what I see to the record, and then I uh, return to the office to compare what, uh, to see how that matches up to what the model, the computerized model says. Um, I, we're splitting the work with the county in terms of field work. I've done approximately 90% of properties that have been assigned to myself, which means there's about uh, 200 or so left that I have to do. Um, according to the state, from 2000 and 2021 to 2022, there was an 11, the median sale price increase in Ontario County was 11%. Uh, from 2020 to 2022, it's a 14% increase. The properties that I've looked at so far in the town of Farmington and have compared where I've seen to what's on the model, um, if I stick directly to what the model says, it would be so far from the properties I've seen so far, would be 36% increase. Um, that is something that I'm going to have to work on. 
like closing the gate to see what I can do about that. If it's accurate, what's the time? We know people are, for two years now have been paying over the listed price for properties. They've been fighting over them. Yeah. You've got uh, people who are buying houses sight unseen. Yeah. Um, we've got, you know, we've also got people who are you know, in getting into bidding war. Right. Now. right. It should slow down with the interest rates that they jump. Should I know up to seven and a half now? I believe. It. Yeah. So that, that's going to cut into that a little bit. Yeah. Chris. No, it 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 it, it concentrates on each town. Okay. So the eleven. Oh my. That's correct. What's happening then? I mean, so that's correct. The 11% that I quoted is just simply what the state says for the entire county. Okay. But there are variations. There are variations. Okay. But the 36% the that I mentioned was just for five different streets that I was going to go by and find. Okay. So that's where I was hung up. Paul, just to. Uh... Clarification, Chris lives on Galvin Court. Oh. And the reason he's laughing is he came in to me about three weeks ago. He's like, hey, I picked your street. And I looked at the model. I looked at the resale. And I don't know if he's trying to scare me or not, but he said it's going to be probably a 25% increase in assessed values. And I'm like, I kind of expected that. Yeah. Yeah, so he just happened to be here for that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for coming tonight, Paul. Uh, nothing from recreation tonight. Conservation, Tim. Anything to report? Yeah, uh, being with Mr. Grant and the assessor, uh, I just want to let the people at the at the meeting to just want to explain that the first item is just so that they have an idea. I recently joined the board back uh, in late June, and uh, we were asked to update the open space index. It's a list of properties that are considered open space for various categories. Uh, it's all public information, and you can go online and review from the Ontario County you know, online system. Um, basically, we're just looking at the open space and see what has changed since the last report. The last report came out in 2013, and we've been the last couple months just checking it out using the computer. And then anything that we find, we just go out and visually take a look at driving around, and we just just check to see if there's you know any development on the property, like whatever we're building. And given the recent past five six years, there's been a lot of development commercial and residential in the town and some of that has changed each property is assigned uh, a property code i think it's state the state state, uh, yes. state, state uh, makes the you know as far as they make the, the code file and then we uh we're, we just finished gathering the information and our chair Ms. boyd is uh collating all the changes and she will forward it in to the appropriate people, I believe the assessor Mr. Grant and probably supervisor, I believe. I'm not sure. I, I'm not privy to that discussion. We'll see what maybe we can do. But uh they do this every every couple of years and there's a more development coming in. It's probably gonna have to do it again sometime in the distant future. Um the sec second thing um is that the board re recently received information about the code update. Uh, Mr. Mr. Inglesby and Mr. Grant recently sent us an email regarding, you know, some information about the update, and we're evaluating it now in our next meeting on uh, Monday, November 20th, assuming that we get people to show up in the holiday weekend. Um, we're going to, you know, flex that. Um, 
The next one, uh, planning board applications. We didn't get anything the last time uh, from the planning board. And I don't know as of yet if we're going to have any for that meeting. And then um, the last thing, uh, this is a last minute decision on my part. Uh, I attended last Thursday's uh, Zoom continuation for regional planning conference workshop in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And they had three sessions. I attended all the ones on the wetlands. There was some information that was, was pretty good. Um, they had a, a chief, chief meteorologist from the Buffalo uh, National Weather Service there, and she had a presentation on um, our recent uh, regional weather in the lakes of uh, Western New York. And there were some interesting pictures. She went through some of the big storms we've had in the past three decades. And there were some other statistics. Um, that information I was hoping to get by slide. I the slides are not available yet. Um, and then there was a, a session that it was a stormwater jet ship system um, that a representative from the Mural County Planning Department talked about basically there's, I think it's in the process of setting up a, a system to give the local watersheds in rural County where they go out. And he actually went out to his neighborhood. He was a West River resident. And they collated uh, all the information regarding if there were issues with the retention ponds or whatever, you know, what they do up there in, in, in the town of Webster. And, and they mapped it out. And that was pretty interesting. And that was I was and this is the application of GSI now which is affecting all the departments across the you know, the governments and stuff and fires and hopefully they're gonna use some more soon. But that's it. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, communications are on file, reports and minutes are on file. <coughs> First resolution is to adopt the 2023 budget. So moved. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Mike. Uh, as part of your agenda, you should have had the attached sheet for the tax rate for all the different districts, just to give you an idea of the, the size of the uh, town budget and how many different districts there are by most of them are, you know, sidewalks and Street lights and like that are broke out by the different subdivisions. And as I mentioned earlier, that on tax rate for the general and the highway fund will be down 2.39%. Any questions? No, I thought it was a smooth process this year. Every year it gets a little easier you know, for me, anyways. What about you guys? All in favor? Aye. 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 We had a comment, a question. Oh, sorry, Chris. No, it's this year's assessed value. Right. Yep. Yep. Good question. Uh, second resolution is authorizing the town supervisor to sign a contract with the Farmington Fire. Department for so 2023. Moved. So moved. Okay. Motion by Mike, second by Ron. We did have the public hearing uh, last meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three is a resolution authorizing town supervisor to sign the Manchester fire contract for 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Or is a resolution authorizing the town supervisor to electronically sign the annual contracts with Ontario County. For enhanced law enforcement and court security for 2023. So moved. Second. So we, for the many years, we've um, contract with the Ontario County Sheriff's Office for road enhancement enforcement. And then over the last few years, uh, instead of hiring people to do our court security, we've hired the Ontario County Sheriff's under their under their payroll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Advise resolution authorizing a scheduling of public hearing for the proposed local law entitled a local law repealing the existing chapter 74 of the Code of Town of Farmington and adopting a new chapter 74 providing for the administration and enforcement of the Uniform Fire Protection and Building Code and the State Energy Conservation Code 
for our November 22nd meeting, and this requires a roll call vote. So moved. Second. Supervisor Inglesby? Aye. Councilman Herring-Dean? Aye. Councilman Casale? Aye. Councilman Holtz? Aye. Thank you. Number six, the resolution authorizing code enforcement officer to purchase one new and unused 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 LTD four-wheel drive crew cab pickup truck. So moved. Second. Motion in the second. Again, this is part of the 2023 budget where we're allowing them to order it now with the uh, long delay times. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seven is a resolution authorizing the town supervised center proposal for professional services from MRB for the final phase of the water line project along North Road, which is in the town of Canandaigua for a total cost not to exceed $66,500. So moved. Second. Motion by Ron, second by Mike. Again, this was discussed at the joint water meeting with Farmington, Canandaigua, and Hopewell. And they gave us the, the go ahead to approve the proposal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Block 8 through 11. I have a request to block 8 to 11. Any objections? So I'll move it on money. I have a motion by Steve. Who have a second? Second. You can, second by Ron. You can do the big water main one in with that, I guess. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. It's just a little different. All right. Block. Steve. Yeah. So the yeah. Okay. Um, number eight is moving money within the LED capital project. Number nine is the 332 and 96 water re replacement project. Number, number 10 is appropriate fund balance in the sewer side. Put more money in different accounts because we're here at the end of the year and running out of money. Uh, 11 is the budget amendment for some VLT funding to some general lines, building justice contra contractual uh, other government services, public safety, zoning code update, agricultural zoning amendments, and planning and development. Okay, I got a motion second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Eight to 11. Number 12 is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the monthly report for the supervisor for October 2022. So moved. Second. Motion by Ron, second by Mike. Comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 13 is a resolution authorizing the town supervisor to sign an agreement with Precision Group for slip lining three pipes, uh, one on Rushmore Road, one on Sheldon Road, one on Herondine Road uh, by the highway department. It costs not to exceed 63000 So moved. Second. Motion to second. Uh, talking about 80, one's 80 feet long, 60 feet long, 52 feet long in different diameters, 30 inch diameter, 24 inch, and uh, 15 inch under Herndine. And we did talk about it for a while at Public Works. Yep, same process as we've been using the last couple of years on other pipes throughout the town. Right, a lot, yeah. lot easier than digging. When they slip that, they can change those dimensions while they're doing it. Change the dimensions. Yeah. Actually, they'll put the thing in there and then it usually will stand it out, and it conforms to what pipe is so left so there, the one. and then it conforms to the bottom, which the. They say DC lights because it gives that natural bottom. It's great. So it's all done at one time. All at one time. Yeah. You can do a couple pipes a day or three months. And that way we're not digging up the pipe and then having so a bump in the road. Are, are pretty deep into the ground. And same with, I lived with it for a while. <laughs> When they dig up the road, put a pipe in, always ends up being a bump there. Yeah. And I've had one in front of my house for many, many years. Getting less and less every time you redo the road. Yeah. Oil sewn it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a motion, right? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 I also mentioned while I'm thinking of it, 
uh, I believe it's the 29th of the month. There will be a letter that goes out today from Ontario County, uh, public notice that we'll have a meeting in here on the 29th. It's run by the Ontario County DPW. In 23, they plan on replacing a lot of the culverts on County Road 8. And then 24, uh, road improvements, which we'll learn more about on the 29th, but it's repaving, maybe new guardrails, that, that type of stuff. And it's from 96 all the way to the county line. So looking forward to that. It'll be 7 o'clock. Number 14, resolution authorizing the highway park superintendent to purchase a trailer from Roy Teatsworth at a cost not to exceed $9,427.50. So moved. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fifteen is a resolution authorizing the hiring of a water and wastewater maintenance assistant effective November 21st at a rate of $22 an hour. So moved. Second. We're getting almost to the, to the full point. The number of employees. We, we grabbed this guy. He's got a CDL and uh, experience in a couple of companies, but his current employment is we're stealing him from the town of Seneca. I didn't run into the highway superintendent or the town supervisor in the last couple of days. My meetings at the county. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sixteen is a resolution authorizing successful completion of probationary period for Jennifer Goodell. Pay increase of fifty cents an hour from nineteen fifty two to twenty dollars and two cents effective November thirteenth. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 17 is a resolution of sympathy for the Giroux family. All, all. You do that all, all. again. Uh, I'd like to read it. Uh, whereas the town board was deeply saddened to learn of the untimely passing of Dorothy Giroux on November 3rd, and whereas Dorothy's son, Don, worked as an MEO in the highway department for 23 years and then again as highway park superintendent for six years, uh, therefore, it be resolved the town board adopts this resolution, extending its sincere sympathy to the Drew family and spreading her memory upon the minutes of this board meeting. And be it further resolved, the town clerk forward a copy of this resolution to Dorothy's son, Don, uh, here in Farmington, New York. All in favor? Aye. 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 18 is a resolution for the pay in the bills, extract 21. General fund, $80,380.21. Highway fund, $57,167.60. Beaver Creek Park, $6,473.10. Town signs, capital project, $3,566.60. Route 332, 96 waterline, $3,300. Sidewalk Capital Project, $870. LED Street Lightning, lighting, $9,195.29. Storm Drainage, $266.01. Sidewalk District, $48,605.44. Water District, $26,047.31. Payroll Deductions, $124.04 for a total abstract. $235,995.60. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Mike, second by Steve. Questions? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a training under 100, uh, going to the Finger Lakes Waterworks myself uh, in December. Um, and under discussion, I had a request for an adjustment on the Kennebec Court 5928. The individual came in today. Uh, so I'd like to cover that with the, the town board. Um, I, I talked to the resident October 31st, uh, which was the last day to pay their water bill and sewer bill. It was a high bill. 
Uh, we had gone out there, did a reading a week or two before, and the water meter seems to be working. That I just basically told you, you got you to pay the bill. And, you know, that unfortunately this quarter, if you don't pay by October 31st, the amount of money rolls over to the county and it shows up on the town uh, and county tax bill. So I just asked her, pay what you can of the bill. And then, you know, the rest will roll over to the county tax. Well, today she came in and tried to pay an extra $200 with the town clerk's office. And eventually they came down and, and got me. And I listened to what she had to say. And I, I basically told her, I can't take any more money from you. We closed the books November 1st. And your account is zero because that dollar, whatever that balance was, will go on your tax bill. And she gave me a little argument at first. Well, then I asked the town clerk to print her bill because she's like, well, I don't know anything about this late fee. So in a paragraph, you know, the center of the bill that everybody gets, it basically says that after October 31st, you will inherit a penalty fee applied to your bill. She's, first thing out of her mouth was, I don't read that. So it's like, what can I do, right? So I, I took her down to the bottom of the bill where it says, if you pay by this date, it's this amount. And after that date, it's this amount. I said, that's the difference of that is the penalty. Well, she didn't want to hear that. So the next thing, I was basically, her and I, her conversation was done by then, but then she asked the town clerk for congressman's address, the assemblyman's address, and so it's okay. We're still going to get the bill in, in January. There's not anything I can do. Just wanted to bring that up there. We're not waiving anything. No. The original request was to waive the balance of her bill. It's like, no. At this point, it's gone. It's gone. It, it, well, by Friday, it'll be gone to the county. Or Monday, it'll be gone to the county. So I just wanted to bring up the date on that. Uh, health insurance, I did send you that health insurance information and the choices. So give me some feedback. Um, the newest members in the town that are under the bronze plan, Excellus did away with it. So we have to offer another bronze plan. Um, the old 17, we're offering, we're considering offering a different plan and the platinum two, I asked the town board to look at a platinum six plan because the medical insurance went up 13%. And it's even with these new plans, uh, it's like a hundred thousand dollar increase from one year to the next with, with these new plans that I sent to the town board. So uh, as soon as you know, as soon as they give me some feedback, uh, we'll get that out all our employees. Uh, so they're made made aware of it, and then uh, if anybody wants to change plans or whatever, we do that normally in the first week or two of December for the new year. Any questions on the health insurance? No, we just got that. Pardon? We just got it yesterday. Yeah, we'll, they just sent it to you yeah. yesterday. Yeah, we'll take a look. Uh, and then next meeting, I just wanted it for the public. Uh, we're going to increase the commercial sewer rates at our next meeting. Uh, they haven't been raised since January of 2017. The, earlier this year, we raised the residential rates from $87.50 to $90 a quarter. So the commercial rates will go also from $87.50 to $90 a quarter. And that's, that's why I wanted to get that information out tonight. Got a resolution prepared. For our next meeting, so forward a draft of that to the town of Victor, and because we do their sewer, and they'll need to put that into their town board process for the for the increase. Any questions on that? Uh, and that's all I have on the agenda. Any other public concerns or questions? Not all. Take a motion to adjourn. So, second. Motion by Mike, second by Ron. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.